Hello and welcome to Merge Multiple Books and Sheets. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked a question about how to combine multiple workbooks into a single workbook even when there are multiple worksheets in each workbook. And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Exercise one. The first thing we're gonna do is store the path to the data folder in a single cell. We can pretty much use any cell that we want, but what we wanna do is name that cell. And it's pretty easy to name a cell. All we need to do is select the cell, head to the name box, type in our name, and hit enter. Now please note that I use the name file path. In practice, you don't have to use that name, but if you use a different name, be sure to update the M code accordingly. M code, yeah, we're gonna use M code to tell Power Query how to do this merge. Exercise two. In this exercise, we're gonna use Power Query to do this merge. The first step is to go to the video description and copy the M code. Then we go to data, get data from other sources, blank query. Then we go view, advanced editor. We don't need this stuff. And then we control V paste. By the way, in exercise one, we named a cell and we used the name file path. If you happen to choose a different name for your name cell, you're gonna wanna update that right here. Then we hit done. And just like that, Power Query has gone to the data folder, has pulled in all the workbooks and all the worksheets and lined everything up based on the column labels. So as long as the column labels are the same, this is gonna grab it all and line it up just like you'd want. Then we can go home, close and load to existing worksheet, pick a cell and click OK. <laughs> and just like that, we got it. And right now we're in pretty good shape because as we put files into that folder or take files out of that folder, all we need to do is click refresh. As a note, this workbook needs to be outside of that data folder and it can be anywhere, just not inside that data folder. Otherwise it's gonna try to include itself and it's gonna be a nightmare. But you'll notice the file headers flow through with the data as well. So in the next exercise, we're gonna clean that up. Exercise three. In this exercise, we're gonna customize that basic query so that we can promote and filter the headers, filter the file list, adjust for more than two columns, and so on. So I could double click to edit my existing query, but instead, I'm simply going to right click it and say duplicate. And by duplicating it, the original query is unaltered just in case I need to reference it. So the first thing we wanna do is promote these header values. And the way that I do that is by clicking use first row as headers. The next thing I wanna do is filter out all of these header values from the data range. To do that, I'm just gonna use a simple filter and I'm just gonna uncheck the column label. Okay, and this is looking good. While we're here, I'm gonna show a few other customizations that you can make to the basic query. Now, if you're not familiar with Power Query, you basically have a list of applied steps and all of these steps are run every time you refresh the query. And what you can do is add, edit, or delete steps as desired. For example, if I wanted to filter the files that are included, I can go to the source step and then I have many options. For example, if I want to file it based on extension, I can do that. And that way I can only include Excel files and exclude other types like CSV files or PDF files. I can also apply a filter based on name. For example, does the name equal, begin with, contain, and you get the idea. I can also filter on key dates or the folder path. In this case, I want all of these files, so I'm not gonna add any additional filters here. If I click on the next step, that's where I have this table added as a column. I've expanded the sheets, and here I could easily add filters if I wanted to. In addition, I may wanna keep the sheet name and the workbook name along with the data. So in that case, I'm gonna to go to remove to other columns and I'm gonna click this gear. And this is where I could keep additional data columns if there were any. I could also include the workbook name, the worksheet name, and even the folder path if desired. I could also rearrange the column order if I'd like just by clicking and dragging. And here it's asking me if I wanna insert a step, which I do, so I click insert. And maybe I wanna move the item column to here. If I wanted to rename any columns, I could just double click and type in the desired name. I'll call this workbook, and this is worksheet. And with these customizations complete, I can close and load to an existing worksheet, pick a cell and click OK. So after you create your basic query by copying and pasting the M code, you can then do several customizations. And I just demonstrated a few customizations, but as you can imagine, there's tons of additional transformations you can do. So 
That's how we can use Power Query to merge multiple books and sheets, even when each of the workbooks can contain one or more worksheets. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.